So today I got an interesting video for you. This is an energy monitor, and I've been wanting to get one of these so I could get some real numbers about amps and amp hours. So I'm going to install this meter today into my setup, and I'm going to be able to monitor, and we will check to see how much the Dometic fridge runs, how much the bed heater runs, and how much the LED lighters runs, how much energy they're going to use. Now, one disclaimer. I am not advocating that you wire this yourself. This is a little complex. I'm going to show you just enough wiring so you can see that you, it's something either you can handle or you can't handle because there are some calculations that have to be done about the size of the wires and you should have some electrical experience. So this is electricity. You could get hurt, so I am not advocating that you do this install. Um, but you can watch it and watch how I put it in and I am not an electrician. I am not an expert. I am a hobbyist. So. Um, I'm going to install this myself and I'm doing it just so I can see what usages that I have. So if you're interested in that topic, stay tuned and we'll get started. So the way my wiring currently is, is I have a ground block here with a wire that comes over and goes to the ground of the battery. So the first step I'm going to do is I need to break that wire and take the shunt and put it in between. So I'll take the wire coming out of here and attach it there and run a new wire from here to here. The next part, step two, is we're going to add, I'm going to add three more wires and they'll go in just into the back of this box. So one wire will go here, one wire will go here, and one wire will go here. And I'll give you a close up of the wiring diagram that's on the back of the box. All right, and then the final step is the easiest step, and that's going to power it up. And so I'm going to take a wire off the bottom of my 12-volt fuse box, the plus 12, and run it into the monitor. All right, I've got my shunt mounted up here. I've got it going into my ground block now. And then I've got my wires all tidied up. Coming up here... And so all the wires I have left here are all my controller wires. All right, I've got everything wired up. I've got my 12 volt coming in here to here, and that powered up the meter. I've got my wires coming up, and I don't know where I'm going to put this. I've, I've left some extra. I'm not quite sure where I'm going to mount it. But since I'm going to be experimenting down here, this will be just fine. So what it's showing me there is that I've got 12.6 volts. I have the car off. No current, no power, no watt hours. So first thing I noticed was um, this is my USB. And even though everything's off, I'm going to plug this in. Okay. Now even though everything is off and I'm not using any lights, fan, or anything like that, it's still drawing 0.3 watts, which isn't much. We're not talking amps, we're just ta talking watts. So in amps, 0.03 amps, so very little. So evidently this USB converter does draw power. So I'm going to turn on just one uh, LED strip. Let's see where it moves up to. So 0 0.05, uh, 0 0.6 watts. Let's turn on another LED strip. 1.8. Turn on another one and another one, and another one. So that's all my LED lights. And I've got, of course, a big strip going back here. So with all my LED lights on, I'm drawing 0.77 amps. So that's, that's getting up there. So that does use a lot. So that tells me something. So I, now I, I don't use all of them all the time. So I'm going to back it down just to the big strip over the hatch, which puts out the most light. So that's going to knock it down to 0.3 amps. All right, so here's my wiring setup. What I've done is I just took a little piece of angle bracket and tucked it up here like I did with this guy here. Just tucked it in there and did some zip ties. So um, I can see that from my seat way over here and maybe a little bit. If I turn a little bit, I might be able to see it from the bed. So that'll work out good. So let's test out the electric blanket. So we're hitting it, sitting at all zeros. So I'm going to kick it up to, let's say, it don't really matter, but kick it up here to three. All right, this is what was surprising. So it was rated for 75 watts, 
and I was calculating at about 6 amps. Well, it draws 7 amps and almost 100 watts. So that was unexpected. Um, but that's fine um, because the great thing about having the thermostat is that it's going to cycle on and off. So it'll always use 7 amps when it's cycled on. But I found that uh, one can be comfortable if it's not too cold. And I, if I set it on three and a half, it is very toasty warm. And so um, the great thing about this meter is, though, I can reset it and I can calculate watt hours. So I'll be able to calculate the amp hours um, on a night where I'm using the refrigerator and the bed warmer. So the next thing I want to check is the refrigerator. Here is my bed and I flip my bed back and here is my Dometic CFX28. It's currently turned off. Um, I'm letting it get warm so we can plug it in and check the power. This is awesome. Highly recommended. I have it in many other videos. Spend the money. So it's got plenty of room in there. There's a nice light that'll come on. This is your warm part, warmest part, and it gets colder as you work back. Um, you can see I've got milk in there, two liters, plenty of room, fits great behind the seat. And I just plugged the fridge in, I can see the cool light. Now what I want to do is I want to get it to try to go into turbo mode. So I'm going to hit the set, and I'm going to drop it way down. Let's say, let's just take it all the way down. Alright, that's all the way down to minus 8 degrees. So let's go see. That should definitely kick it into high mode. Okay, so with putting it down that low, it is drawing 3.3 amps or 46 watts. So now I've set the temperature back warmer to where it was so that it would cycle off. So without the compressor running, it uses 0.05 amps or 0.6 watts. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to leave it alone for a while and let it cycle on by itself and see what kind of draw it uses for that. All right, it just kicked on and it's using, looks like it's gonna run up to almost four amps. So I've just been letting it sit. And so I guess that tends to be its regular draw when it's on. Now I started a timer so, and I reset the watt hour meter thing so I'll be able to report um, in a bit, I'll let it run for an hour or two, and then we'll find out how much it used. Temperature outside right now is 70 degrees, and I have it set, I think, at 34, something like 34 degrees. All right, so I have the final numbers for you. So it ran for four hours and used 27 watt hours, which is basically two amps over four hours. So that's one half amp per hour on average, which is amazing. So what I've learned is the lighting if you have a whole lot of LEDs, that can use some power. The refrigerator, not a problem. That thing's awesome. The thing I've got to watch, though, is my electric blanket, so I'm going to have to do some more watching on that and looking at my total time overnight and seeing what that uses. And the temperature in the car today varied from about 65 to 93. So that should give you some idea. So quite amazing stuff. So I hope you enjoyed the video. I know it was a little technical and maybe a little boring, but if you're into this kind of thing and trying to track all your energy usage, it's kind of interesting. So thanks for watching. See you later.